you are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire YouTube wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leek. And together we are Road, Road Break. Break. And of course, you know, Ryan Whitman is with us. So, hi, Legend Killer. You know, and we know you're at work. So, work, damn it. Tell your family, we're right here once again to talk about NXT. Pretty solid show, Jean Paul. The paths are like being clear right now. The road is signed to be paid for what's going to happen on NXT TakeOver 30. So, like a great triple threat match to close the show. Dexter Loomis, Finn Balor, and, you know, the professor of locks. Timothy yeah, Timothy Thatcher. Thatcher. Yeah, and, you know, we had also, like, a new debut next week. It's going to be Rich Holland, a rugby player. So that's, like, pretty cool also. I, I like the I like the promo from Barnes and Reed. I really like that. Was, yeah, no, that was legit. I mean, NXT was a really solid show. Um, then, you know, we got a cruiserweight match in there that I was kind of like, eh. You know what I mean? I was like, eh. Now was just, Escobar it, it, is yeah. done. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, is this going to be cruiserweight build? And then it was like, okay. But, I mean, other than that, you know, and the women's match in the beginning I thought was a little sloppy. Um, I don't know if there's just a miscommunication, but we'll get into that later. But overall, I thought it was, it was, it you was know, a really, a really good Diamante episode of NXT. And Hikaru. Yeah, so it's the same exactly. thing. Exactly. It's the same thing. So thank you so much, family, for watching every single one of our videos. We might just mention AEW. AEW review is right there. We're Jean Paul and myself covering every single thing. The pro, SAG writer, Matt Cardona. Get it, Jean Paul. Get, 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 get your boy. Oh, radio, tell me. There he is. And look, I got a, I'm plugging his podcast with the shirt and the belt from his yeah, toy see, podcast. There you go. It's though. not WWE anymore, but like Mark Cardona debuted it on AEW Dynamite. So that's pretty cool. Like, of course, like they view kind of overshadow because see, he shows up, but it was kind of like. No crowd, like, no pop, nothing like out of examine, but watch that, you know, is in the channel for you. So everything that happened over there. So now, Jean Paul, you know, let's get started with NXT. Like you just mentioned, a little sloppy of a match. NXT started right away. You know, no, no, no build, you know, nothing. Although, well, they, the yeah, match, I mean, they had a little bit of a promo for no Keith Lee carrying cross. Yep, your favorite song ever. Uh, I mean, it is a beautiful song. I love it, but like, it's for me, it's all overdone because I remember oh, like definitely. Armageddon 04, they got the same thing. Then I remember, I think, Batista Undertaker, Survivor Series 07, no MERS. I'm like, then they got the pay-per-view, no MERS. I'm like, <laughs> I, I, can I have a little bit of mercy? You know, I'm like, yeah, no. have mercy. So anyway, Jean Paul, like the show started, like, boom, to, to your face because it was Yosha Rai kind of like coming out. And then the Kodakai came out and attacked her from the back. And then they started brawling and everything, feuding. And then we get Tegan Knox and Candice LeRae. The match... Like you said, a little sloppy. I like it because, see, the girls, like, put on always like, a decent show. I, I didn't mind it too much. But, like you said, there were spots that, like, I, uh, it seemed like it was rushed. And also, like, the miscommunication, like you said. Walk me yeah, just a, yeah, just a miscommunication. Nothing, I mean, nothing killed the match. But, like, you know, when you watch so much wrestling, you pick up on that stuff. So, it's like, you see, and it's like, ah, okay. But, I mean, Candice and EO, you know, they work really well together. It was just, it was mostly EO. And this is what scared me. It was EO and... uh going against Dakota Kai. And I'm like, ooh, if that's the match for the pay-per-view, I don't know how that's going to go. Yeah. Because that's where no, a lot yeah. of the miscommunication was yeah. between those no, two. Yeah, you absolutely agree. I mean, Tegan, like, he, she had, like, a few spots right there, but like, I don't think she did anything wrong. Like, yeah, it was on her end, I think she did a good job, you know, and uh, she helped out. She contributed to her team. And then mm -hmm. out of nowhere, she hit also, like, the Chinese wizard. Like I said, to me, she doesn't hit it, like, extremely great, but I can understand why, because the niece you know, always are going to be compromised. So, mm -hmm. like, for me, I would suggest maybe to change the finisher to, like, something that is she's able going to hit you with all the power and strength rather than this, that she has to kind of, like, you know, kind of <laughs> I, I want to go over it rather than just yeah. hit it with full force. But she did that. And then, Eo, did you like the Moonsault? She missed a lot in the Moonsault for me against Candice. When yeah, that's like, yeah. I mean, uh, again, again, you don't know if, if if they if they were rushed and like you know if they're flustered, you know, you know what's going on. But you get to think the last two moon salts that she hit of, of memory were kind of sloppy. They were very sloppy, yes. Yeah, and yeah. and before and before that, she was like you know one hundred for one hundred on the moon salts. Like they were all perfect. And then that's these last two the are like Ooh. the sky. I don't know what's yeah. going on, Mamma Mia. You yeah, know, maybe like, she's right. flying like, drunk. Who knows? You know, I don't I know. Mean, or maybe she's, you know, sad that, like, Kyrie left because, you know, like, that's the scene. Like, even Asuka like, said so... that, like, she was really like, sad or angry. So, or maybe, 
like you said, maybe she's a transitional champion. Maybe she was going to be the one to be the new Kabuki warrior. We don't know. But in the end, Io Shirai and Tegan Knox, they are able to win the match. Like, the mm -hmm. Kai just goes and, like, she's kind of pissed. Like, we will see a little bit more of that Kai. Yeah, she actually kind of, like, kinda, like, walked out there at the end. She was like, ah, uh, like, yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, it's done. So, yeah, whatever. So, like, in, unfortunately for Candice, yeah, she changed her gimmick. She, she, she became more intense. You know, she became more dark, you know, like, dark pixie and stuff. Nothing. It's still done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the one thing I was thinking about uh, when I was watching NXT. It's like, ah, uh, you know, Gargano and her, they changed their gimmick and they're really not doing anything with them. I mean, Gargano, you know, later on tonight, he looked a little better, but it's like, I'm thinking at least they're on TV. I'm like, you know, Tommaso Ciampa, who is like, so we don't have anything for you. I mean, yeah, and they, and they probably don't have anything for him right now, you know. I no. mean, maybe with the with the Norm Murray. See, they will be smart about it. He, he would debut the in the American last championship. He would he, debut in that last match. Yeah, that last you know what I mean? Threat. Yeah, they could do something like that. But, you know, that's me. You know, we're not mm. really saying that. We're bookers. We're not saying that. Like, we fantasy book anything. We write anything. So, you know. But like, going about that, John Paul just mentioned Johnny Gargano. He goes against Roderick Strong. A good match. Like, like you said, pretty good. Of course, these two guys, pretty legit stuff. Even like uh, Moro Ronaldo, Tom Phillips, and Beth, they were saying that they don't have a lot of records. Of these two guys going at it, so this was probably the no, second. No, they and time. and they they even referenced outside. Now I don't know how accurate that was, but they said they only wrestled one time together or against each other, and it was here in NXT. So yes. by saying that, I assume that they're acknowledging the you know the Indies. A so bit, I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's legit, and I mean, this was a hell of a match. I thought this was oh, yeah. probably. I mean, the triple threat was the best match I think, but this was definitely a close second. Yeah, he came here, but you know why. You know, Strong is a is an excellent athlete. I mean, mm -hmm. like his execution of moves. And I like the intensity. Like I said, when he hits, he that's hit hard. And, you know, you feel it. And then you go home. And then you're, you know, you're, you're robbing your whole body because of how hard he hits. Yeah, you got to get in the ice bath. Yeah, you got to get, yeah, you know, the ice bath and all of that. But like, in Gargano, Gargano is just a hell of an athlete. You know, like oh, yeah, he's, he's like, so smooth. He's, and what, what did they say? 13 years, I think, for Gargano and 18 for Roderick Strong. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so. and Gargano, you said the smooth, like he's just, you know, he's like as smooth as Santana and Rob Thomas. It's just, you know, yep. like so smooth, legit. And like those two just like, even like, see, there's no build. At least the magic comes out as like so believable and so great. And and this is why we say all this is, and there was spots in this match, but it was wrestling, 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 a spot, wrestling, 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 a spot. And then it's like, it makes it feel so much more impactful and so much more legit. Yes, and it helps with the flow of the match when you get yeah. a spot. But, like, you know, if you make it all spots, then you forget about wrestling. So it should be, like, a 50-50 thing. And, and when, like you said, when you don't feel that, like, the guy's just waiting there to be hit, mm -hmm. that's when you're like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, that, like to me this was really yeah cool. to to me this was and and I don't want to be apples to oranges, but to me this was a legit match. And then when I see the opening match on AEW last week, I was like, this is just guys doing gymnastics onto each other. Well, if if NJF is able to say that, a guy that mm -hmm. is in is all in the same company, I'm just saying, you know, like those kind of matches, like I said, it, it fits a different purpose, I guess, because again, yeah. you know, they're not gonna put in hell great matches. Like you said, it's just a spot fest because you need a spot for Lucha Service. You need spots for Jerk. You need spots for like the best friends. You need all of them. You need to look, have Jungle Boy look decent. You know, you're not jobbing anybody in this kind of situations. But in this the case, you know, last call and Johnny Gargano beats Roderick Strong. So this is going to have repercussions because as Roderick Strong is going to... Oh, the, oh, you, oh the, the final beat, you mean? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah, final, the final beat, beat. That's what it is. Yeah. Last call, final beat. So I'm sorry. Yeah, last call. Here we go, Hangman. Uh, yeah, last like, call. Yeah. Look, we're talking about NXT. He has AW. He loves that. And Hangman Page and does it. So last call. He's finishing people that now with that. You know, like really with the DDT. No more of the Gargano escape. So that's a little. He switched something up also. So that's. I, mm -hmm. I, I like that. You know, I, I like variety. So like Roderick Strong is going to the back, and then the other members on the other spear that are showing up. And they're like, you know, so why are we bullshit? And then Kyle O'Reilly, the guy that like pretty much was been out absent from all this whole pandemic for great reasons. He has diabetes. You don't want to compromise this guy because he has a hell of a character and is a great wrestler. They're like, what oh, the fuck? Yeah. Why is he done? He's like, where's the fucking <laughs> other like there? Damn it. He's like, we got to start winning championships. We used to run this place from the day that we arrived here. And then Cole is like, so, 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 so. so. <laughs> So they're all like, okay, <laughs> all right, we needed a, we needed to a, a reminder here. All right, let's go. So like, you see that. 
And for the ones that like, there were questions, Jean Paul and myself, WWE made this storyline with Pat McAfee. They made it into like a story. You know, he showed yeah. up, and like, you know, the clip with Adam Cole, and then Triple H, so you mind showing up? How about two weeks? It's already a storyline. People thought that it was legit. Even they had Mark Henry and our great friend, Bully Ray, admitting that it was real. No, it wasn't. So there you go. For the ones that like get yeah, excited this is, over I mean, like these things. Yeah, I and know. I mean, not, not that a lot of people pay attention to it. I myself didn't, but somebody brought it up. They said Pat McAfee in the past couple of weeks has been getting a lot more, you know, bulked up. So why does somebody get bulked up? They don't do it for a podcast. No, they do it because they want to get in the ring. Well, we do it no. for a podcast because we love to eat, but that's a different. Well, well, that well, that's us. But you know, somebody who's employed with WWE, you know, or at least works with them, he's or gonna gets checks. Yeah, exactly. So he's he's gonna be in the ring in some you know way, shape, or form. I would assume against the undisputed era and Adam Cole. We'll see. I mean, I hope to God he doesn't go over. Oh, no, no, no. If they do that, you know, you're killing four right. years of the Undisputed Era in, in one match. In one match. So, no, no, no. Please don't do that. Like, like Jean Paul, see, he said it doesn't work. No, don't get overly really excited. He's as bad as Antonio, the guy that paid $400 to get Alexa Bliss's, like, the cameo. He did that. Of course, he has to be one oh, of my guys. Oh, did you did you see that? Is that the one who he asked her out on a date? Yes. And, you know, she goes, oh, can you go on a date with me? Oh, hey, Antonio. Uh, I'm seeing somebody. Why the hell would you waste four hundred dollars for that when you know she's gonna say no? Sweet G, and oh, there's somebody out there for you, Antonio, Antonia, or Maria. Okay, you know who cares? Nobody cares. Uh, anyway, you know I, I was so I feel so bad for this Antonio, but I don't give those four hundred dollars to like poor people or something. You have that much money to spend, you know? I, absolutely. Yeah. Or rope her. break. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, no, we're not asking for money. No, we're not saying patronize. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Jump well, let's go back to our show. Shotzi Blackheart going against Mercedes Martinez with Tony Khan and Aaliyah. Oh, I mean, Robert Stone. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Good, good match, I think. Mercedes Martinez looked a little better for yeah, me because yeah, the first this... two, a little sloppy for me. But this one, she looked good. But I think Shotzi had a lot to do with that. Yeah, yeah. Sh Shotzi's good. She's one maybe like a little reckless. You could say like she's a spawn of Sabu in some way because like the move she does, it's like she looks like she's going to kill herself rather than her opponent. But, you know, uh, Mercedes looked good in this match. You know, like you said, the past couple matches, it's like, eh, you know, whatever. Maybe it's because she's with the Robert Stone brand, you know, believe it or not. And there's a little bit more of an identity there. It's like, okay, now we know who she is. We know what she's going to do. And this match was kind of quick. Not it wasn't a I would say it was like a glorified squash. It was like kind of drawn out, but you know she looked good. She got the win, and that's what she needed. Yeah, yeah, and you know she debuted a new finisher because she was finishing people with a fisherman suplex, kind of like the perfect plex, a variation of that. Mm -hmm. And now she kind of did like something like a dead body driver around that, or like the wide nose, like what Sheamus used to do. So like she did that, and then she get the pin, and she didn't even need the help because I thought that they were gonna help her. I thought Ali no, I see. Help to her. me, that would have that would have killed her. Yeah, a, I a, a, a little bit. But yeah. I mean, she beat her clean, and you know, Mercedes Martinez, like you said, she's going to be the powerhouse. There's a lot of them. There is like Raquel Gonzalez, so there we have Mercedes Martinez, kind of like the Latinas are being the powerhouses. Yep. So and, and Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley. So like you see, we have three main girls right there. Maybe a triple threat will be legit. I mean, I know that like no, as a lot of people are not so much fans of like the triple threat, but for me. These girls have a lot of potential. Yeah, but see, NXT, NXT knows how to book a triple threat. It's true, so. though. So, you know. Now, so Jean-Paul, it's time for Lucius. It's time for Baz and Kids Glory. So we get the NXT champion, Keith Lee. And he is um, he's coming out. He's going to be answering Karrion Cross. So he comes out. Um, he's all business. You know, now smiles. Pretty, you know, upset. Karrion. You know, Cross. So, like, pretty cool. He starts talking about, hey, Jacoby will be fine. You know, use his will. He's a grown man. He said not to, like, help him out. That's what I did. So, you know, he's like, but when it comes to you, Karrion, you wanted to get my attention? Well, I'm here, so I'm calling you out. And, on, and we were thinking of Karrion. He's going to show up. But then we get our guy, you know, a guy that, like, we saw him on Impact. Hey. <laughs> ah, yeah, Kid Lee, you know it's me, Karrion Grimes. And so, I mean... I feel bad for the guy because they got a job in mouth. 
But, you know, he's like, oh, you got to worry about me. Uh, I'm not going to be there. Doesn't he kind of remind you of, like, the No Way Jose role? Where, like, he comes out and you're, like, the guy's, like, all laughing and jokey. And then it just gets, you know, he's completely just done. Yeah. No, and then, and then Kid Lee pretty much destroy him. And then Scarlett comes out. She's by herself, you know, wearing a dress, uh, red dress. And, like, she's just pretty much waiting. And then kind of, like, I was waiting for her to snap the fingers. And then Karen will be in the big screen. She didn't do that, but then Karen is in the big screen and he says, Kid Lee, you know, you show what kind of a man you are because you didn't help out your so-called friend and that is something that you have to live with. He's like, but now you got to give me an opportunity for the NXT Championship or everybody's going to suffer. So, you know, good promo on Karen Cross. And Lee responded, he's like, anytime that you want, any place, you name it, it's on. So good stuff. I really like that. You know, like John oh Bowen. yeah, that this was that was really legit stuff. This is good. Um, that was no 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 complaint on this. Exactly. You you know, I have nothing else to say. You said it completely. It was fantastic. It builds a feud. Um, maybe you know, like you said, maybe the thing with Scarlet would have been a little better. Or maybe even if Carrion showed up in person, yeah, that would have maybe even had a little more impact. But it was good. You know, I have no problems with it because this is the feud we all want to see. The only thing that I was a little bit like, eh. When he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna run through everybody here in NXT," it's like this. It's like, okay, like what is like? They're not Keith Lee's children, you yeah. know. He doesn't have to protect them. It's like, so go yeah. ahead. Yeah, it's true. It is true. And then of course he got spirit bomb because uh, Rams was attacking Keith Lee one more time, and then he got a mm. spirit bomb from Lee. So like that was cool. Um, I think that what they do with the Karen Cross's promos is kind of I've ever seen Robocop too. Yeah, uh, when he got like the, the that dude has in the screen, and you just see the guy, and you're not able to hear and talk, but you see the fairies. Rrr, rrr. Like that's kind of like the style that they do to be like. Oh the, yeah, yeah, no, I see the similarity. Yeah, yeah. so it's, it's cool. I really, I like that. But like you said, it's it's good. Maybe next week we'll see Karen Cross, so that's important. But like, see the one thing that Jean Paul and I, like, he's gonna start shooting right now because William Regal right away responds and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's not a sack writer. He's just like, I'm the one that has the last call in this, this in the last beat. No, no, the last call in these things. And it's not Omega and Page. I will be the one determining when this match is going to take place and if it is for the championship. So, you know, what do you think of this, Jean Paul? Yeah, I, I mean, see, I like that. I like when there's law and order for, you know, I think that's what AEW's missing. I think they need a commissioner to be like, hey, 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 this isn't no fucking outlaw mud show, even though that's where a lot of you guys came from. This is, you know, a legit promotion. We're going to treat it like that. So that's, you know, what they are missing. NXT has it, but my problem is what we're going to get to later in the yeah, tag team in division. A bit, yes. But, I, I mean, I guess we can just say it now. It's not like a big spoiler. Next week, um the Undisputed Era is challenging Imperium for the tag titles. And there was nothing where, like, there was no number one contender match. There was no nothing like that. You know, there was no Indu share. I feel like they were, you know, probably higher up on the power rankings than Undisputed Era. So, and Brizongo looked good, even though they just lost. I would still say they're higher ranked. And we get this match next week. Yep. So, yep. like, did they just, you know, muscle and bully their way? into yeah. you know getting these title shots which william regal said he doesn't allow so that's where i'm like eh like really but it is true well in the show you know because of the tweet that the one of the guys mm -hmm. share a little bit of a punish you know they, they of course they said oh we're not gonna punch him they are gonna punch him. you know yeah. that's that's how it is you know they've been off tv why because he did that and i use every single would have been the better choice but of course the undisputed are they need them because they're finally all healthy and ready to go so uh, I don't know. It's hard because it's like if they will move to the main roster, it will be a little different. But some of them don't want to go because they're afraid of like the characters. They rather be the fact that they rather be in the same promotion and not go up. It, you know, tells you the whole story right there. Going about the whole story, let's go in. Tag Team Champions Imperium. The only thing that is legit about. It. I mean, I love them, but if they don't, if they're not there every single week, I mean. I mean, or every other week. I don't care for them. That you know, and, and, and to me, you need rise. all four. Yeah, and, and you know, ever rise like we said. That's a team that will ever rise in three to four years from now. But right now, they're the jobbers. Yeah, and you know, you know Imperium, like you said, to me, they're in, like Walter is the main. Th that would be like if you had DX after Shawn Michaels left, but then you got rid of Triple H. Yeah, and it was just X Pac, you know, Road Dog, Road Dog and, and Billy. So like, yeah, you it's like, okay. like the, the main dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's like you need like, Walter there. But I'm just I mean, be there without Adam Cole. 
Yeah, exactly. Like Eichner and uh, Bartel are like le- so legit wrestlers. Like uh, Bartel, I see he's like a Kurt Angle. Yeah. I mean, not just because he's bald and this and that, but like he, you know, even wrestles the same, has the same intensity. Like Kurt Angle and Cesaro like fuse together. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, it's just the characters. And like you said, we see them, you know, it's maybe once a month. It's yeah. like, okay, how do you get behind them? Yeah, I mean, that's a, you know, European uppercut, you know, the power up, power bomb uppercut that mm-hmm. ever rise and they, they will not, they're not ready to rise yet. But see, that the Undisputed Era attacked them. All of them came out, you know, as they're celebrating, shot the system, boom. Mm-hmm. They started, like, to attack them. And then, like you said, they get the match for next week. So, like, again, it's like the Undisputed Era going to the old ways to get a championship match. It doesn't yeah, make now, sense now, when see, you hear now, from if- Wood Regal. Yeah, now, if you wanted to do this, it could have been like, you know, they could have called, this is Imperium, they could have been like, you know, all this shit at Worlds Collide, now we have to deal with this, we're so sick of this bullshit, we want a match with you next week. And then Undisputed Eric could say, well, if we'll accept the match, but it has to be a title match, or like it has to be a number one, con- like if we win, then we can challenge you at NXT 30. Yeah. No, you know, then, then it's like, boom, there's a story. And then they can be like, we accept. And then Regal can be like, no, no, no. And then they can be like, Regal, yes, yes, yes. Because we have the belts. And if you say no, then we're just going to fucking leave. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean. But like, So that, that was a, probably the only thing that it was like thumbs down. Just because of the decision yeah. from the one end, you can just uh, you have to apply it to everybody. Not just like yeah. Especially thing. when you say it in the same show and it's fresh in your mind. That, yeah, yeah okay. exactly. That's what I mean. So now we go to like a video package from Bronson Reed. That was cool. I mean, like we got to hear a little bit of his backstory. He said that pretty much the girlfriend and now wife is the one that like helped him out to like be a professional wrestler. He mm-hmm. debuted against Lester Loomis. That's the first time he had the tryout and, you know, he was able to win. And now he's really happy that he's like pretty much going to be at NXT TakeOver 30 fighting for the NXT North American Championship. He said the boyhood dream came true. So the boy, the what is it? The boy the thick, thick, the, the thick, the boy, thick boy dream. The thick boy dream is gonna be true once again. So like it's cool, and we get to see a little. And that's the one thing that you always said about NXT. You get a little bit of like the characters, who they are, why they do what they do. So like it's cool. I, I'm really happy with that. Hmm. No, yeah. I agree. I, I love his seeing the backstory, and he was like, "Oh, I was a WWE fan my whole life. This is all I wanted to do. I can't believe that I'm actually doing it." And like you said, the girlfriend, wife. You know, she pretty much financed this, you know, helped him out. So that was legit. We got to ask for, like, you know, two more girls like that, right? Yeah, really, yeah, exactly. You know, if you guys but, know anybody, two, please. Yeah. But, I mean, it was legit, and he deserves his opportunity. And we see, like, you know, they even said, Keith Lee said, you know, he forfeited the belt to give opportunity. So now new guys are given opportunity. Because you could easily put Roderick Strong or Finn Balor, or not Finn Balor, uh, Johnny Gargano in there. And made it a legit match, but it's like let's give somebody a chance who, like they said, this will be his first takeover. Yeah, and, that, and that's good. Like you know, like you said, like give different guys new chances. I mean, the other ones have had the time and the sun. You know, they they mm-hmm. got their, their opportunities. Now it's good for somebody else to like see what they can do. So good stuff exactly. on that. Now we get Dakota Kai. She was being interviewed. Says, "How do you feel about this? You know, like you just lost a tag match with Candice. It's like I'm tired of tag matches. I'm tired of triple threats. I'm tired of bar rules. I'm tired of bad fatal four ways. Like I want my opportunity." And I'm proclaiming myself the number one contender, so I'm going to be the one facing Io Shirai. And as she's leaving, we feel like, come on here. Hey, well, what the hell? And it's real rapidly. And she's like, hey, I, I want Io Shirai. She has something that I want, and it's a championship, so like, I don't care if I need to run over you to get that. So we kind of like, she's like, well, she goes, I like that, though. We're like, we'll see what Mr. Regal has to say about this. So, like, that was good. I really like that. Kodakai, no, you know, I, I, like, I that. like this. And I like this a lot, and I still think the match at 30 is Dakota Kai and Io Shirai. I don't think that train has fell off the tracks yet, and I think you're going to have this match, and now you're going to set up the Raquel Gonzalez-Ray Ripley feud. Yeah, 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 you're right. See, That's that what I think this is going to set up. She could help out. Uh, Raquel will help out uh, Dakota to go over Rhea mm-hmm. Ripley. And then you'll get to see uh, good, good book and jump off. Good, good. And, and if EO is meant to get called up or just be transitional champion, you want to get the belt back onto Rhea, you have her beat Raquel, and then she challenges EO after that. Yeah, and then, and then done. And then pretty mm-hmm. much done, and then Rhea gets it again, and then we'll see who steps up to the plate by that time. Or like maybe exactly. Rhea goes heel, and maybe you have Tegan Knox going again, or you know you have what more girls, right? You can have even Aaliyah. We have other girls right now that like are loving mm-hmm. for their opportunity. Oh yeah, it will be it will be fun. 
So now, Jean Paul, let's go to Isaiah Swerfscott going against Jay Godless. You know, this one, like you said, it was like, eh, I mean, they need a filler. You know, all, all the legit stuff is pretty much already. We we use it everything. Where, is, what, is Kushida done? Can someone uh, please confirm? Like, like he is he done? Japan and he doesn't. He hasn't been able to come back. I don't know, but like, yeah, can he? Can Marty McFly hop on the the hoverboard or just go back in time and, and then and never go to he, Japan in the first place? Uh, uh, I know, but like, see, like the match is pretty much. Both of them are like calling out Santos Escobar, saying like, I want to be the next number one contender. I'm pretty sure that like they're gonna. Announce something so like uh, NXT take over thirty. Somebody will be fighting Santos Escobar for that. Belt yeah, I, I I think it'll be. I don't Isaiah. think. San, yeah, I don't think Santos Escobar's title reign will be cut short. So the story is that the only guy who beat him is Isaiah Swerve Scott. So you're gonna put Swerve against Santos, and he's gonna win to be like, "Fuck you! I got my win back. I'm legit." Because to me, the only guy you can put this thing on is Kushida or Drake Maverick. Which I mean, to me, Drake Maverick is a kind of bullshit. So. But I don't know where's Koshida, so I really don't know who's going to win the thing. Oh, yeah, it's true. And talking about bullshit, uh, Kid Lee said bullshit twice in his promo, just so you guys know. Yeah, well, that oh, that's, you know, I'm glad you said that because that's something I wanted to actually bring up. With the way, um, you know, AEW, they like to Use swear the all the time. Page and all that, yeah. yeah. Do you think this is kind of the same thing to be like, yeah, oh, we're going to... you know this. You know this. Like, they they watching every single thing. Because even that. with Adam Cole, when he had a thing of the pat, with Pat McAfee, he was dropping F-bombs, like oh, last yeah. shots. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was. What's his finisher? There's so many. What is it? The, the last shot. Yeah, the last shot. Okay, I was going to say shot. there's so many last shots, last, shot, last call, calls, final last beats. And the final beats. So, like, yeah, yeah. the last shot is Adam Cole. And you're right. So, is uh, I don't know where, like, this is going to go with, like, Santos Escobar. But, like you said, the mm -hmm. only one that right now can at least challenge, at least challenge, is going to be Isaiah Swerfscott. Because, like yep. you said, Maverick, not believable enough. Kushida, we haven't seen him in, like, a long time. And then the other cruiserweights, I'm like, uh, oh, okay, you're going to put Tony Nese there. All yeah, right, and, wow. and I mean, Tozawa has looked so bullshit on Monday Night Raw. Ever he since he went ninja, done. Yeah. Nin, nin, nin. And, you know, Jack <laughs> Gallagher. <laughs> Jack Gallagher, done. Completely done. Well, he likes you know. to do other things to girls, so like, done, yeah. you know, done. Everything yeah, like he said, the, the, the premier loser, done, you know. Done. So, like, is Scott is the only choice that you have, so it's going to be good. Match was pretty great. Atlas is a pretty good athlete, and I think Isaiah mm -hmm. Swerve Scott, like, he needed this win to kind of solidify his number one contendership. It's not exactly. confirmed, but like, we know he's going to be. He, oh, did that, yeah. he did that, like, that little Jimmy, that, like, a DDT or, like, a face first. I like that when you know, on air, boom, and then he uh -huh. hit the finisher. What is it, like, the GTR or something like that, I think it is? Like, yeah, I forget the, the driver, name of it. The driver that he uses, pretty good stuff. One, oh, two, yeah, that's a legit finisher. One, two, three, and then he gets the victory over Atlas. Atlas has, did a pretty great move from the top rope also, and uh, that was really cool. And I, everybody's like, oh, my God, he was supposed to win with this. Because he tried. He was going to go after that. He tried for that DDT that he does. But, like, uh, yeah. uh, Scott countered that. So it was cool. It was good. And I like that. And like you said, next week we're pretty sure we're going to hear about from Santos Escobar. It's going to be, okay, you want a match? NXT TakeOver 30. That's going to be the opening match we got. So good stuff, John Paul. And now let's go to the main event, mister. Main event is triple threat match with uh, Dexter Loomis, Finn Balor, and also Timothy Thatcher. They were like promos throughout the night. And like, you know, for example, Timothy Thatcher will talk. And then you'll be like, oh, that's Lumis is bullshit. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to put him in the Fujiwara armbar. It's done. And in the back, you'll see like. And then Finn Balor kind of like he's grabbing his jacket. He's getting ready to go. And then, you know. Like, yeah, and then he like, gets up. And then, you know, you see Loomis was right behind him. Loomis. But before that, Jean-Paul, let's go to like Rich uh, Holland. Like I said, he's a promo. We got a promo from him. He's a rugby player. He's going to debut on NXT. He's going to have a match. And he's going to be part of this tournament. He's going to be fighting against Damian Priest and Only Lorcan. So I feel bad for Damian because you're not going to debut this guy and not have him win. Yeah, I mean, that's what the thing. What do you thing. think, like, I mean, but, you know, Only Lorcan, you put it, that's like perfect. Like, hmm, I wonder who's going to eat the pin in this match, you know? Oh, yeah. You know, but hey, I mean, Priest, you know, since he turned babyface, I feel like he was like really hot and then he turned babyface and then he kind of like started to flatline a little bit. But I still think they're going to do good shit with him. I don't think he's going to be a guy who's just forgotten. But this rugby player, um, what did you say his name was again? Uh, is uh, Rich Holland. Yeah, because they did show highlights of him well, he was with guys NXT against UK. NXT UK. He yeah, so, NXT I mean, he, UK, yeah. Yeah, he, he's a legit promo. He's, you know, 
he's a hell of a like you look at the guy he's huge he's a, you know you saw from the highlights of his matches Tom in NXT Phillips was UK. like oh I've seen the guy oh he's great he's yeah, Tom he's Phillips was whacking yeah. yeah I mean yeah. the guy looks legit so you know I'm excited NXT so stacked though it's almost reaching the point where I'm gonna say it's like AEW it's like don't bring anybody new because there's nothing to do with well guys. and imagine let's say quote unquote they don't do NXT UK anymore why you do you, what do you do with all these guys? Then? Well, they said a lot of them they'd let the only one they really want is Walter cuz all the big names either have allegations well, Kofi, all or them, yeah, they were like yeah, they were let go, yeah. Most, yeah. All, all, all like the main names unless you know the in the girls you have Piper Niven, Tony Storm and mm-hmm. uh Kaylee Ray, but that Kaylee Ray. Yeah, and that's it, you know. Other than that you have like good like prospects but that's all you have but we'll see what and they what do about uh, that mark andrews and the flash morgan webster oh I, are I they like legit them. are they legit or are they bullshit no they haven't got any heat from that I okay so they're legit like, you got to bring them over because that's a tag team nxt needs tag team well, what about like you know the grizzled young veterans yeah yeah they there unless they're bullshit i don't think though so. i don't know i mean so. no no they didn't get any any accusations or anything their wives are good so like you know yeah. we'll see but like now jim paul let's go to the main event it was a pretty great main event. I think that like their styles, we have like a master in, in wrestling technician in Thatcher. You have a mixture of a high flyer and a technician in a submission hold in Loomis. And you have Finn Balor that has been able to adapt to both styles because of his experiences in Japan, everywhere. So they put on a great show. The only one complaint I have, Jean Paul, they freaking changed Dexter Loomis's music. I don't know if you picked up on that, but like they changed that and I'm freaking pissed. Because yeah, they, I mean, so I, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was so similar to Stranger Things. Maybe Stranger Things was like, hey, you got to change it. I could see that. But I could also see it being because WWE is just bullshit. Because look how they changed Gargano's. Mm-hmm. To me, Gargano's was a lot cooler when it was just like the hymns. or like the. It almost sounded like angels were like singing. Yeah, and then and then now you get like guys that are like <laughs> like like grunge music, and I'm like that kills it for me. Supposedly, so, the Gargano is because you're going heel, but in the case of Loomis, like what? Why are you going? Or where are you going? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, I don't like the music change, but you know. As, but like, as Paul, help yeah. me out with the match though, like quality match, you know. Oh, oh, what, I, what I thought I thought it was I thought it was great. I thought every guy looked good. The only thing I thought was a little bullshit was Finn Balor didn't look as good as I thought he would, and not just because he didn't win the match, but just because I thought Thatcher really dominated it. I don't know how you felt because they were taking out Loomis, they were throwing him to the outside, then the two smaller guys were going at it. Typical thing, like we kind of, I mean, it's almost the same formula now that I'm really thinking about it. As the match we saw last week with a uh, thick boy, oh, yeah, Reed, yeah, I mean, how they would eliminate Bronson Reed. I mean, that's just a smart strategy to do in wrestling eliminate the big guy, and then you know, the two you know, some guys that are similar size go at it. But you know, it was good. But like I said, Thatcher, I thought looked the most dominant. But you know, Finn Balor still looked good. Loomis, every time he came in, though, it was like he no sold everything that happened to him before, which was good. He just came in and it was like choke slam, Ernagi, you know, just bulldog, and you know, he looked so dominant. Loomis, Loomis is God, dude. No, 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 no. L- Loomis legit, is just dude. like I told you, like he's, he was my pick in uh, in our best of uh, twenty twenty so far awards. So like, I agree with you. I feel that like the one thing is concerning for me is how Finn Balor has been looking lately. Because like he's been losing, losing, losing. It's like they don't. I don't really know where. Yeah, that, the that's for the for Finn Balor is, you know. And uh, I don't know. I think yeah. it's like a little bit of bad luck because remember they had a path clearly for him to go against Walter. COVID came, so it's pretty much they have to adapt. They'd be like, guys, you know. Now the only like, thing that would be this, legit, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and the, now that you say that, the only thing that would be legit is, you know, maybe next week you see Balor. He's like, you show him being pissed or something like this. Like this is bullshit. Or like whatever, and then maybe he's in a match with just some jobber guy kicks his ass, and then after that you hear. I mean, and, Wal- and Walter. If he agreed to show up, but like yeah, you know, I mean like, that would be legit. Are not that- too clear when it comes to Finn Balor, you're right. Yeah, I but I mean the the only other problem I have besides like you said Balor not looking good, which I've already stated, is just the ending of this thing. Now the whole ending sequence was legit when he had Balor kind of like in the ankle lock, and he's like, "Oh, it's done, it's done," and Balor's like, "Well, oh, first for the he ropes. had the he did the coup de gras, right?" Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and then, you know, at the end of this thing, because then Loomis was like, he, he rolled out of the ring. He was like, ah, duh, I'm done. So he had this, and it was like, oh, he's going to tap, or he's going to reach the ropes. And then Phillips is like, no, it's a triple threat. There's no rope break. So everybody's like, ah, duh, rope break, please subscribe. And they're like, it's legit. But then Loomis comes in, and he just pops up out of nowhere. He's like, me. And then he gets the choke on him. And then Balor you know, eventually, like yeah. eventually, yeah, when he has that. So then eventually, you know, Thatcher releases the hold. So Balor sells the leg injury, rolls away. And he was selling the injury. It's not like Balor was getting up ready to kick Loomis's head off. He was selling the injury. I don't like how the ref just looked at Thatcher and was like, ring the bell. Can you pick oh, yeah. up the arm and let the arm drop? Yeah, that, that's what I mean. That's the old school, like, you know, like the, the procedure. Yeah. That's the old school thing. That now, you don't got to do it three times. You don't got to do the one, two, three. I understand it's a heated moment because doing one, two, three would kill the excitement. Yes. But, but just do it once. Time. Yeah. But he completely passed out. And it sucks because, like, you will think, at least my perspective, is, like, this guy knows how to apply his submission holes. So he should know, or if he knows how to apply, what does that imply? If you know yeah, you I, see I mean, how I play with I, the words? I agree with He's that. able to, like, receive those holes. I agree with that, but it's at the end of a match, it's one on one. And also, like, the size of Loomis is like twice the size of Thatcher. I mean, Thatcher's not that small, but Loomis is a really broad man. He's not like skinny, you know, he's big shoulders, big chest. So when he gets behind you and chokes you, like, how is a smaller, slender guy like Thatcher going to oh, yeah, get out yeah, of yeah. that? If, if you will Especially, apply it, yeah. oh, like me, I'm done, you know, and you don't yeah. even need to go for that. You'll just see me done. Yes. yes. Mm hmm. Yes, it's true. I mean, but like, but, uh, Loomis got the win. And he was the right winner, though. Like we said, Balor was legit. But to me, Balor should have been, I don't know, like you said, it, it was everything for Walter. He was probably going to be the NXT UK champion. It was going to be legit. And, you know, those plans fell through. Now the only thing I can think of is you keep you hold them around. You still keep them relevant. Maybe you do something, like I said here, like a definite heel turn, or he's like, oh, it's bullshit, and he goes to his inner demons, and then eventually he brings out the demon, and then that's who defeats Karrion Cross. But Yeah, may maybe. Like I said, like I think that a lot of plans were like messed up because of COVID. I mean, thousands of plans probably went through the, you know, like months mm -hmm. of months of preparation went through, like, you know. Ours did. We were supposed that. to go to Raw, supposed to go to Dynamite. Done. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, there were supposed to be so many things. But, I mean, Dexter Loomis gets the win. That's important. I mean, I'm, mm. I'm happy because he was, like, the, the right choose right here. Uh, oh, I just, mean, I wouldn't mind like Finn Balor. I wouldn't yeah. mind Thatcher. But I feel like I had a lot of my preference was, like, with Dexter Loomis. And, you know, we have it. I think we're going to have a unique, you know, ladder match. Just because there's going to be a pre pretty much guys that we've never seen and a takeover before. Because oh, Loomis has not had a match and takeover. He's been in takeover, meaning, you know, kind of like showing up there but you know mm. even like for him the plans change remember because of the velveteen dream you remember like that he kind of like suggested they were going to be attacking yeah and that change there you go so that sums it right jump Paul nxt that was our show i think it was a pretty solid show and like i said finally we're starting to see a little bit of matches we can we, we can start pre you know booking nxt take over 30 that's gonna mm. happen the day before SummerSlam. so that's pretty good and, you know, remind everybody where they can find us on the social media world, Jump. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram, The Original Rope Break, Twitter, The OG Rope Break, and right here on YouTube for the best reviews in the internet and YouTube wrestling community right here on Rope Break. Exactly. The original so, Rope Break. The original Rope for the Meat and Potatoes family. You know, it's my mm. is tomorrow, so we'll be right there for you. Ryan Whitman will be with us. So, you know, Jump Paul, there's only one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, uh, duh.